Greetings, I'm Marco Casagrande and I will be presenting eSpoofer, attacking and defending Xiaomi electric scooter ecosystem. This is a joint work between Eurocom in France and the University of Padova in Italy. When I visit uh, crowded cities, I find them filled with electric scooters, maybe too many of them. They communicate with a companion app that uh, uses wireless technology. So for example, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy. This opens for a critical attack surface where an attacker can uh, infringe security, uh, stealing the scooter or uh, leaking uh, private uh, data or just break the device altogether. This communication between the scooter and the app happens with proprietary protocols uh, created by the manufacturer. So we know little to nothing about their implementation and their design and also their security mechanisms. They are proprietary, custom made, there are no documentation publicly available and they are very difficult to test in a normal environment. There are millions of those uh, scooters and millions of users for these devices and mo all of them are controlled by a uh, few manufacturers. We focus on Xiaomi because it is a market leader for personal use scooters. Due to the sheer size of the Xiaomi ecosystem, one attack can have a huge impact. For example, uh, the Zimperio researcher uh, could stop a scooter in the middle of the road, posing, of course, uh, safety risks. In our work, we reverse engineer all Xiaomi e-scooter protocols released since the first one in 2016 up to the Mi 3, which is the latest scooter that we could uh, find in our times. Those protocols have re-implemented Bluetooth pairing and session phases in their own custom way, which we are at it in uh, YSEC, so they are insecure. That's why we are here. In fact, we uncover uh, severe protocol level vulnerabilities in their uh, design and implementation. For example, pairing can be done by unauthorized parties, even though the uh, scooter is already paired. And uh, even though there is a scooter password, this is not used for authentication and many more. We exploit those vulnerabilities in our proximity and remote attacks. For example, we are able to, uh, to unlock a scooter and just ride it away. So we don't have to carry it on our shoulder, we just ride it away. Then we can also prevent the user from uh, managing the scooter using Mi Home app, the companion app, preventing it, let's say, forever, because we change a um, persistent password, persistent through factory resets. We utilize uh, new attack techniques such as malicious pairing and session downgrade, and I will show you, uh, will present you them. We integrate everything in our open source toolkit, is spoofer. We can reproduce the attacks that are automated. We can tamper with the protocol and provide other scripts to uh, do some, res uh, some uh, security assessment for the Xiaomi e scooter ecosystem. Then we propose practical countermeasures and we perform responsible disclosure to Xiaomi. This is our system model. We have three components, the Xiaomi scooter, Mi Home, and then the Xiaomi proprietary protocols. We assume the most secure setup. So first, the app is already paired with a scooter, with a legitimate user. Then the scooter is software locked. This, this means that you cannot ride it because the brakes are always enabled. Then Mi Home is protected with a password that is set in the e-scooter memory. Mi Home, when uh, opened, will ask the user for this password. If the password is not uh, inputted correctly, the user cannot uh, unlock the scooter, for example, or perform any other uh, operation. And uh, as another note, we can do all of our attacks and attack strategies while the scooter is uh, uh, in motion, by the way. In our threat model, we have two attackers, the proximity uh, attacker and a remote attacker using an Android app. So the proximity, proximity attacker has a BLE enabled device that is within BLE range of the scooter. The remote attacker installed a malicious app on the target phone. We are only targeting Android because we exploit Android Bluetooth APIs. Whether the attacker is proximity or remote, she has two goals. The first one is to communicate with the scooter. We do this by uh, spoofing Mi Home, the companion app, to the scooter. Then 
we can send arbitrary read and write commands to the scooter that affect unprotected memory. We can send them in an unauthorized way, so without authentication, and uh, we can send them stealthily without user notice or consent. We found four protocols for Xiaomi. Those are uh, implemented at the application layer by the manufacturer Xiaomi, or Ninebot, to be precise. And they implement pairing and session phases. Also, we found that there is no BLE link layer security enabled or enforced, despite the devices supporting them. You can manually enable this, but the app doesn't do this. This means that you can just eavesdrop the traffic and it is not encrypted at the link layer. You, can, you have to rely on the hopefully good, no, uh, application layer encryption. Then uh, I will just review the two phases. This is a general uh, picture of what you expect from pairing a session. In pairing, the devices agree on a pairing key, and then they, in session, they uh, use this uh, pairing key to derive a session key, and then to uh, provide a secure channel with encryption, for example. In the next slides, I will show you first the protocols, then the vulnerabilities, and how we attack the protocols. And you will always find pairing in green and session in blue. First protocol, a very encouraging name, no security mechanisms. We labeled uh, this this way. So there is no pairing and no session, just to start. Then you have a proprietary uh, characteristic on the Bluetooth Low Energy GAT server by Xiaomi, and you just exchange clear text data. So you can just read everything. This read and write request is in clear text. So the attacker can just spoof uh, Mihom to the scooter, just initiate a normal BLE connection, and then perform those arbitrary read and write requests. It needs some reverse engineering, so we reversed the firmware in uh, Ghidra and the app uh, in uh, uh, Java Decompiler uh, uh, software. And uh, examples of what the attacker can do, uh, for example, with reading, he can read the image of the scooter, infringing privacy. He can uh, unlock or lock the scooter and change the password, uh, breaking security, and also changing the maximum speed of the uh, device. So. Uh, breaking secure, uh, safety. Next one st tries to do something better. For example, it actually uses pairing and session. During pairing, the um, app reads the pairing key from a characteristic on the GAT server. And this is new, changed every boot. Then, during session, the uh, packets are obfuscated by XORing them with the pairing key. And that's it. So, no encryption. We attack this in uh, two ways. So first, the pairing key is publicly exposed. You can just read it from the GAT server. So uh, for example, we can just uh, uh, use pairing in uh, uh, our own malicious way. We call this malicious pairing as a technique. We just perform the pairing that we re-implemented and we read the pairing key. But even if we didn't know the pairing key, well, we reverse the app. We know uh, we can eavesdrop the traffic, so we have a capture. So we have the obfuscated packet. We have the command, which is always the same. We can just sort them to retrieve the pairing key. So uh, plenty of methods, but this is not over. We have another technique to attack pay, uh, the second protocol, P2, because we found a hidden downgrade uh, command in the firmware. So we can just initiate a session without knowing anything about the previous pairing or whatsoever. We send this uh, downgrade command, and now we just speak P1, so, which is even more insecure than P2, as if it was easy. And this is called session downgrade. Then um, P3. In P3, pairing key is derived from the e-scooter name and some other constant values uh, that are the same for the whole uh, Xiaomi ecosystem, at least for the devices we found. And then, after getting this, uh, deri deriving this pairing key, you just XOR it with the packet, so similar to the previous protocol. We attack this, but well, yes, uh, the pairing key is basically public because the e-scooter name is advertised publicly, broadcasted to every device within uh, range. So the attacker can just uh, read the e-scooter name, reverse engineer the app, get the constant values, and just derive the pairing key for himself, connect to the scooter, and send arbitrary commands. 
So uh, some reverse engineering effort, but that's it. Just to summarize, we have P1 and P2 and P3, which are insecure by design. They rely on security through obscurity. They exchange uh, clear text uh, data. They just send the public uh, uh, seats for the pairing key. They use weak uh, XOR obfuscation. And also, it is trivial to impersonate me home. We call them uh, legacy protocols because they should only exist on non-updated devices. You can update the devices to the late, later, uh, latest protocol, P4. Is it uh, uh, the savior? Well, not at all, because we, can, because we can still do malicious pairing and session downgrade on P4, which is the latest protocol. So we start with P4 pairing. During pairing, well, at least we start with some uh, state-of-the-art uh, cryptographic uh, primitives, but they are badly implemented. So we do a limited curve Fielman, we generate a shared secret, we derive from the shared secret a pairing key and a one-time key. Then we use the one-time key to perform authentication on the app. So the app authenticates to the scooter, because if you see uh, upwards, we have a challenge, and then we have a response calculated uh, from the, the challenge and the one-time key. We attack this with malicious pairing. So uh, we can do this because pairing is first unauthorized. So even if the scooter is paired, you can just go near it and pair with it. That's it. Then it is also non-authenticated. So for example, if you set an e-scooter password, you don't use it. It's not mandatory. It's not required. So we just uh, uh, re-implement the pairing, and we are now authenticated, and we can do whatever we want, achieving the attacker's goals. Then session. First, we have an exchange of random challenges. And uh, from the challenges, we de derive directional session keys and IVs. From uh, those, we calculate the response. So we have mutual session authentication. Both devices authenticate to each other. Now that we have authentication, we can uh, use still the, se the directional session keys to encrypt and integrity protect every other packet exchanged. So this looks promising, but we have our session downgrade command, which is a different one than the previous uh, P2 session downgrade, but still, um, we can do this session downgrade uh, attack strategy. We downgrade this to P3. So uh, here we just have the scooter name, we calculate the pairing key, and uh, that's it. We can send arbitrary read and write uh, commands. So to implement, we implement those attacks in eSpoofer, our open source toolkit. We have automated the proximity malicious pairing and the remote session downgrade. We uh, reversed the BLE firmware. Uh, in Ghidra, so we give to you the project with the uh, name on the functions and other uh, good hints. Then we have the sectors so to tamper and uh, um, look at the uh, packets exchanged through BLE, and also free the hooks for the cryptographic calls inside MiHome. And uh, we submit this uh, for the artifact evaluation, and we got some fancy badges. We bought three scooters, the M365, the first one, is the Essential, and the Mi 3, the latest one at our time. Uh, we have a neat setup because we only have three uh, scooters, but we wanted to test as many boards as possible. So we found some clone boards for the Pro 1 and the Pro 2 uh, models, and we installed them on the M365, which is compatible. It has hardware compatible with it, so we can just run them in our um, scooter. On those boards, we installed five and we flashed um, eight BLE firmware versions covering from P1 to P4. This is our evaluation result table. Yeah, I'm sorry for the resolution that uh, uh, messes up the, the lines, but okay. So as you can see here, we can, you see a lot of check marks and uh, very few crosses. Well, no crosses because uh, in every single combination of components, we were able to spoof me home and send arbitrary read and write commands. Just to go into the technical stuff, on the left, you have our uh, technical specification setup. So you have the scooter model, the BLE board that uh, uh, is mounted on them. For example, in the third row, you have the clone Pro 1 board installed on, in our M365 model. 
Then you have the belief firmware and the protocol they run. For example, the first belief firmware uh, released is the 072, and uh, it runs the first protocol released, the P1. And then you have the attack strategy. So for P1 and P3, you need to reverse engineer, and then you are pretty much set. For P2, you need a mix of reverse engineering and either malicious pairing or session downgrade. And then we found that Xiaomi uh, at least tried and uh, patched the session downgrade on P4 because we have two flavors of P4, P4 version 1 and version 2. The only difference is that version 2 just doesn't have the uh, downgrade command. But still, we can use malicious pairing and attack it anyway. So we have three countermeasures. The first one is that if you run the legacy protocols, you can just update the scooter from Mi Home and uh, reach P4. Then, uh, in order to solve, uh, to address malicious pairing on P4 version 1 and version 2, and in fact, every other protocol, we redesigned the Xiaomi protocol to uh, have a password protected and authorized pairing. Then, for the poor users that uh, do not have the patch, because there are some models from some scooter models that cannot be updated to P4 version 2, the M365 and the Pro 1, the oldest models, we uh, created a script that patches out uh, the hidden downgrade command uh, in the firmware and uh, doesn't accept any P3 uh, protocol. So if, have, if you have those models, you can just at least patch it. And uh, we evaluated this on a real scooter and it worked and you can find the video on uh, uh, our GitHub uh, repository, of course. And more details for the countermeasures in the paper for time constraints. So just to summarize, in this work, uh, we performed the first uh, eva security evaluation on the Xiaomi e-scooter ecosystem, targeting mostly the wireless protocols. We reverse engineer the protocols, pairing and session, and session phases. We uncover vulnerabilities. We exploit them in our attacks that can allow you to unlock scooters, to uh, drive them away, to uh, prevent access to Mi Home. We release an uh, uh, open source toolkit. We have countermeasures. And we disclosed everything to Xiaomi several months ago. The last response was in December. And they told us that they were not able to reproduce our results. So uh, that's why we developed the countermeasure, because uh, don't expect any patch soon. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm here and I'm glad to answer them. Thank you. So you said you are not expecting any patches soon? Uh, I mean, uh, after a few months of uh, uh, discussion, we offered them the paper, we offered them the videos, we offered them the scripts automated, and our full support. Uh, they gave us uh, one response every month, but in the end they just said uh, we were unable to reproduce them. Can you give us the scooter model? We explained this is not dependent on the scooter model, because if you see in the table, everything is vulnerable, and uh, that's the last uh, time we've uh, received any response. And you open source the attack. Sorry? You open source the attack then? Uh, yeah, we, we told them explicitly with uh, a month of the advance. We are publishing this on a conference. We are sending it to, this, uh, to YSEC. They didn't answer anything. So uh, there's that. So, you, so that means someone can actually use this attack uh, to personally attack. So, uh, partially, the, those uh, things were partially known by the hacking community. They are using this to mod the scooters. So, uh, we are, uh, let's say, improving on this. We are providing a security assessment, a ho the whole view, instead of just knowing the command to mod the scooter, but, but pretty much, yes. But since there were already apps doing uh, these kind of things, the attack basically is already kind of open source. So we wanted to provide more awareness. Okay. And if Xiaomi doesn't respond, at least uh, we, we give the so, patch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay. Then let's thank the speaker again. Sure.